everybody. Uh, welcome to my weekly live chat. I am Mary from Mary's Heirloom Seeds. My lighting is a little off today, but we're just going to roll with it. You'll... Nope, that's not going to work either. All right, here we go. All righty, everybody. So uh, we are discussing what I am planting for my fall garden. Um, and part of the reason I'm discussing this today is because I do have oftentimes people ask me to help them plan out their garden. And while garden planning services are not um, something I do right now, uh, I do on an individual basis, I should say, but I can help you anyway. Um, Agave Field, welcome from Southeast Texas. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. Um, if, you're, if you're joining me again, welcome back. I try to go live here every Thursday at 5 p.m. Central Time. Hey, Denise Porter in San Diego. So tonight's a little different because generally I ask you a question um, and then I give you some feedback, but today is going to be all about me. <laughs> Not really. It's going to be all about what I'm growing and what I'm planting and how maybe you might want to incorporate that into your garden. Um, Sandra Brown, hey, welcome. Thank you. So in the description section of this video, um, yeah, Krista, the heat is on. Notice I'm inside, which is why my lighting is not the best today, but that's okay. We'll, we'll just go with it anyway. Uh, it's 105 today was the high, and with the heat index was like 115. So, of course, I'm enjoying going live inside the house. Uh, thanks, Krista. I appreciate it. Sometimes it's a little different based on what you see and I see because I'm... I'm watching you and chatting at the same time. So in the description section of this video, you'll find links to my comprehensive planting guide, uh, links to Mary's Heirloom Seeds. Hey David, thanks for joining us. You'll find links to my fall planning and planting guide. This is what I am basing, generally, what I'm planting for fall. Some of these I'm gonna be planting right now and some of these I'll be planting in the future. Um, there's also a link to sign up for my email list. The email list will give you um, updates when we have giveaways and seed sales. Speaking of giveaways and seed sales, I just announced them this week for August. Happy August, everybody. Um, August 1st through August 7th, we've got a seed giveaway. So you can check out Mary's Heirloom Seeds, go to Mary's blog, and it'll be right there. Or sign up for my email and I'll send it to you. And then we've got a seed sale. Part of it is only through the 8th. And part of it is through the entire month of August. So you've got lots of time to shop for your fall garden. Now, part of, like I mentioned, is the planning and planting portion of it. Some of this stuff you'll be planting and planting sooner than I will. Um, I did mention in previous videos that my estimated first frost date is November 12th. So I still have, we're in August, so September, October, November, I still have three months before my frost date. And some of these that I'm gonna mention can also handle a little bit of frost as well. So to kick things off, we're gonna go with beans and cow peas. Now again, depending on where you're at, this may not be a fall crop for you, but right now it's hot. I love planting beans. I grow beans in as much spaces and, and spots that I can grow in. I love all different kinds of beans dry beans and green beans, or what we call snap beans. Um, but in the summertime, when it's really, really hot, we plant cow peas. And they're actually not a pea in the regular sense, they are a bean. Um, so I just planted cow peas, more cow peas, on Monday. Today is Thursday, August 3rd. So I planted peas, cow peas, on Monday, and I had about 75% germination rate already. Now, generally, beans and cow peas, um, they take four to 10 days to germinate, so I still have time. That means we've got some great germination here. One thing to consider, and very, very important, which is why I'm gonna mention it in the very beginning, if it is very hot where you live and you are planting cold weather crops or really any crops, um, you really need to manage your moisture. So if we're looking at planting cow peas, they're generally a little more drought tolerant but when we start talking about cucumbers or cauliflower or broccoli, you're gonna to need to make sure that your soil doesn't dry out while they are germinating and while it is hot. So it feels weird sometimes talking about 
fall crops when it's 105 degrees outside, but we, we are planting and planting. And if cauliflower takes 90, 90 plus days till we can have a harvest, we gotta start planting that now. David said you already planted some of your uh, beets, which is awesome. Um, speaking of hot outside, I am staying hydrated. I have a new tumbler, not the regular one. These ones are so cool. Oh, I just ordered more too. <clears throat> Love those tumblers because it's still full of ice. Um, so the common question I get with um, beans and cowpeas is when to harvest. Generally from seed to harvest, beans and cowpeas start at about 60 days and they go up to about 80 days. Again, depending on what the variety is. Uh, the, another common question is when do I know when to harvest for dry beans or for cowpeas? And that's a really good question because you're like, well, what do you do? Um, with dry beans and cowpeas, especially for dry beans, I leave the beans generally on the plant until they're a lot more dry. Um, for cowpeas, it's a toss up. Um, if you want to harvest fresh cowpeas, um, you can harvest them before the pod is fully dry or before the pod is dry at all. But those cowpeas inside are going to be immature and they're not going to be dry. So they need to be either refrigerated immediately or they need to be frozen so that you can eat them later on. Whereas if you harvest cowpeas when they're dry and when the pod is dry, they're a dry, you, you treat it as a dry bean so you can pretty much just store it in a jar. Um, next is cucumbers. Two things now that are not necessarily considered fall crops, but I wanted to get those out of the way because I love growing them and because it's so hot where we are in the summertime, sometimes some of these things don't do as well. So we have a second crop um, in, the af in, the, in the afternoon. Um, we have a second crop in the later part portion of the year so we can harvest a second time. Um, again, depending on your area, you might not be considering cucumbers as a fall crop, but they are generally ready to harvest in about 70 to 80 days, depending on your area and depending on what you're growing. Um, and specifically, Armenian cucumber and Suyo long cucumber are more heat tolerant. So if I wanted to grow a crop um, in a hot area, those are two varieties that I would definitely choose. Uh, you're gonna sow those seeds one inch deep um, and you're gonna provide a trellis. Now, companion plants for cucumbers are going to be radish, lettuce, dill, peas, uh, regular peas, garden peas, or cow peas, um, marigolds, nasturtiums, calendula, borage, oregano, chives, broccoli, celery, beets, and tansy. It's a good thing that you can watch the replay on this video because that's a lot of information. And if you haven't already, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, now, let's get into the more traditional fall crops, um, bunching onions and chives. They are generally a 80 to 90 days from seed. And sometimes the seeds can take a little longer than normal to germinate. So you wanna maybe start those right now. For me, I will be starting them in August for a fall crop. Um, companions for bunching onions and chives are beets, spinach, brassicas like broccoli, lettuce, parsnips, carrots, chamomile, parsley, dill, summer savory, and marigold. So remember when I was telling you that this video is gonna be about what I'm planting, but also I'm giving you some tips and companions. So that's a common question people ask is, well, I got these beans from you, well, what do I plant with it? So I'm not going to plan out your garden for you, but I will give you all the information that you need in order to determine what to plant with what. Um, one great um, resource Inside my comprehensive planting guide that's in the description section of this video is a companion planting guide. And I also have a plant spacing guide both for in-ground and as well as for square foot gardens. So it tells you the plant spacing of everything and for square foot gardens it's going to tell you how many seeds you can plant per square. It's a recommendation. It's not uh, it's not the rules and most of you know if you've been watching my videos I tend to be a little bit of a rule breaker when it comes to planting. I overplant, I underplant, I plant them too close together. So you know do what works for you for your area. 
And again, I'm in East Texas for those of you that don't know. We are zone eight. Honestly, I forget if we're zone eight or nine, but it really doesn't matter to me as much as my frost dates because I use my frost dates to determine when I plant my seeds. Um, so that's super important for what we're discussing tonight with our fall crops. And I pretty much did the same type of series in the beginning of the year for planning for our spring plants and when to plant for spring. So we're kind of just playing off this here and just deciding what we can grow. Um, bunchy onions are super easy. Chives are super easy. Um, plant the seeds under the surface of the soil and keep the soil moist. It can take a couple weeks for the seeds to germinate, so you will need to have patience. Specifically with chives and onions, the seedlings look like grass, so it's important to plant these in an area that will that doesn't have any weeds, um, it doesn't have any grass, because you don't want to go, oh, that's a that's a weed or that's a piece of grass and then you pull it up and then you go, oh crud, there's a seed at the end of this and it was supposed to be an onion. So something you consider if you wanna plant um, seeds and onions or onion seeds, sorry, um, bunching onions and chives, give them a space that doesn't have a lot of weeds or, or grass. Brussels sprouts. Uh, so I was watching somebody else the other day and she was talking about the different um, things that she's going to grow and some people were like, oh, I've never grown Brussels sprouts before or some people are like, I've never even eaten Brussels sprouts before. Um, so, um, oh, I think that was um, the Walterman Homestead. I think she hadn't grown Brussels sprouts or hadn't even eaten them. So I was like, that's a cool one to grow. Um, now, one thing to consider with Brussels sprouts, they take a long time to grow from seed. Um, they're about 90 days. So if you feel like it's too hot outside, you can grow those um, under a shade or indoors if you really want to. I'm not doing anything indoors right now. I'm putting everything outside because it's hot and there's plenty of space outside for me to grow without having to grow indoors right now, just to kind of heat up my house a little bit more. Um, Krista says, difficult growing chives this year. I'm not sure if it was me or ants. Ooh, ants are not fun. Um, ants, as, as, Beneficial as they might be in the garden, sometimes they do chew on, um, it's Texas. We have ants that eat your plants. <laughs> I'm learning a lot of great information about the different bugs and things that we have here. So uh, like for example, I saw a bug on one of my um, Thai Roselle plants the other day and I like, that looks like a squash bug. But I got a closer picture of it and I looked on it. I was like, oh, that's a wheel bug. It looks a little bit like a squash bug. Anyway. Changing gears here. Um, eat everything as well as grasshoppers. Yes! I had a frustrating week. I had an entire bed of beans that got eaten alive by the grasshoppers. The only thing left was a stick. So everything we do this year has been different than last year. So we're learning. Um, David says, I've had many ants this year too. It's been lots of rain. Yeah, exactly. Um, Deborah Dixon says, Hello, Mary and chat. Hello. Susan says I grew my chives in a grow bag. Took them a while to mature. Like looks like chives. Yes. Uh, bunching onions are very similar to chives. They look very similar. Um, so, <laughs> hey, Riquetta, thanks for joining us. So, bunching onions and chives, fantastic. If you want to grow them in a grow bag, fantastic. I am grow. I'm adding a large area on one side of the garden that isn't really in use right now, and I don't want to till it. And I don't want to spend the back breaking uh, work in 115, 105 degree weather. So I'm covering it with cardboard and I'm going to put some containers on it. And I'm going to grow this massive area of containers. And then when everything's done and the weeds are and the grass are killed underneath it, I'm going to pull those up. I'll move those planters and put something else in the ground there. So we're working here. We're learning a lot more about our area. We've only been here for two years, but we have grown a fantastic garden. Um, and homestead here since we've only been here two years. Um, so Brussels sprouts, um, you're gonna sow the seeds a half an inch deep and about three inches apart, but you want to thin those um, about eight to 12 inches apart. So depends on if you're going to be transplanting or if you're going to be planting them. If you want to over sow like I like to do sometimes, um, and then you just pinch off uh, the extras so that they're not too crowded. If you get plants that are too crowded, sometimes they're not as healthy. Um, companion plants for Brussels sprouts include celery, onions, mint, basil, rosemary, 
marigolds, garlic, and sage. Now you're gonna see some of these repeating them. And some of these are fall crops. So you're gonna be thinking about now we can interplant some things. Like I've got Brussels sprouts and I've got onions, or I've got Brussels sprouts and I want basil. So you can kind of play with that. You can put, say, some lettuce around the outside of your Brussels sprouts. And that way you can grow some Brussels sprouts and your um, tall Brussels sprout is gonna kind of shade that lettuce a little bit. So just kind of thinking about that. If you can only plant one Brussels sprout per square, I have a raised beds and I use a square foot gardening method. So I can plant one Brussels sprout in the middle and then I can put a couple of lettuce, smaller lettuce varieties like Tom Thumb or Little Gem or Summer Bib and I can put those around the outside. Um, I can grow Jericho lettuce which is a lot more of a heat tolerant variety. So we can interplant there and we don't necessarily have to have just one thing in that square. Um, common pests for a Brussels sprout is aphids. Um, let's see, broccoli, your cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, uh, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, I have found that those can be more susceptible to aphids. The easiest way to take care of aphids, speaking of ants, um, ants will farm aphids because they have like a, like a honeydew flavoring. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> But if you see a lot of ants in your garden, you see ants on your plants, generally you might have an aphid infestation. So check your plants regularly. If you do see a one or two aphids, give them a good blast with your hose. Um, some people just use a spray bottle and they'll spray it. I, I can't do that. I, I, there's too many plants to spray with a spray bottle, but I will use a good hose. I'll, I'll give the plant a little support and I'll give it a good blast of um, water, super easy. If that doesn't work and you do have a bigger infestation, you can use soapy water spray. Super simple. In the description section, you'll find my comprehensive planting guide. At the very bottom, you'll find my um, companion planting, but then you'll also find organic pest control. And so I've got a recipe for soapy water. You do not want to use soapy water spray or neem oil when it's super hot like this, but you can do it at night in the evening time. Um, late as possible when the sun is going down so that that soapy water doesn't get baked on your plants and pretty much kill your plants. So remember to do that later on in the evening. David mentioned beets. Beets are probably one of my favorite fall crop. Um, they're super versatile. There's different colors. You've got white beets, you've got red beets, pink beets. Uh, the Chiogia is a white and red inside like a bullseye or a peppermint candy and you've got golden beets. So there's a lot of different varieties out there. I call it a double duty crop. So let me see just here, I wanna make sure I'm not missing everybody. Okay, um, beets I call a double duty crop because you can harvest just the leaves if you want, or you can harvest the root as well. You can kind of, if you don't like the roots, you can still grow the greens and they're fairly pest tolerant. I think maybe that's why I like the beets so much. Um, Probably my favorites, I actually grabbed a few, um, would be the Chiogia beet, the golden beet, and the Detroit dark red beet. All super easy. Um, the Chiogia is just fun to grow. It doesn't necessarily stay that vibrant white when you cook it, um, but it still has that different coloring on it, which is fun. And the golden beets, of course, are super fun. Um, let's see, when I talked about, I haven't talked about those yet. Oh, I got Armenian cucumber and Studio Long here. Um, I, did men I didn't mention peas yet, I mentioned cow peas, so we'll talk about that in just a second. From seed to harvest, beets are about 60 plus days. Now here's a fun, fun fact. A beet seed is actually a cluster of several seeds. Same with uh, Swiss chard. So both of those are the same family. Um, they look very similar. If you ever look at the leaves of a beet and the leaves of a Swiss chard, they can look similar depending on what you're looking at. Um, but those seeds might produce several plants. So you can thin those and you can actually eat the greens just like you would microgreens. Um, onion microgreens, if you haven't already grown them, definitely check them out. I've got a live video about growing um, onion microgreens, super easy. So we started offering bulk onion seeds, that way you get more than just a single pack of 100 or 200 seeds. Um, they are, you wanna plant your seeds 
David says, I love the taste of beet leaves and salads. Me too. You can start harvesting when they're really small. Uh, and then sometimes those beets create like larger and then they start to grow little small ones too. So you get the little miniature beet greens, super delicious and healthy. So we, we like to offer a little more variety. You know, like I said, if you don't like the roots, you might like the greens instead. Um, from seed, you want to plant those about a half inch deep. Um, you want to do about two inches apart and then you want to thin, um, thin accordingly, depending on what you're growing in. And again, there is a plant spacing chart in my comprehensive planting guide, but I wanted to give you kind of an all around look at fall in one easy video. And this isn't everything you can grow for fall, but this is just a great start for fall planting and kind of deciding what to grow with what. Uh, companions for beets include onions, beans, lettuce, cabbage, radish, and catnip. And they are so easy to grow. It's a fantastic starter variety. So if you want to grow something that's super easy, definitely check out the beets. Um, and if you haven't, if you haven't eaten them before, maybe you want to try buying one from the store first. Um, they, some people say they have an earthy taste. I like them no matter what. I love them with garlic, onions, so awesome. Ron says, I got my seeds stash out for my fall garden that I bought from you earlier this year. Beets, spaghetti squash, dumpling squash, some cabbage. Awesome. I'll get to cabbage in just a second. Uh, greens. Ta-da! Cabbage. <laughs> I'm going to lump greens. I know. They're all completely different. Um, Deborah says, what breed of beets do you use at the salad bar? Probably Detroit Dark Red. Detroit Dark Red is like the most common beet that in general that we I've seen um, it's our number one seller as far as the beets go um, so I would check out the Detroit dark red beet it's a really good one uh, David says some of the Chiojia beets are sweeter okay good to know I it's my favorite so you know golden beets actually might be a little sweeter than the Chiojia beet so if you want to try something fun that might be an option too so back to greens so growing greens there's so many different varieties and I really didn't want to spend an entire evening talking about greens, but you've got lettuce, kale, collards, cabbage, Swiss chard. I'm sure I'm missing some of them as well, um, but those are just your standard general all around greens. They, from seed, they can take anywhere from 40 days to 100 days on some of the late maturing cabbage. And those, dates to maturity. Spinach, thank you very much. I knew I was missing one. <laughs> uh, so there are so many different varieties, um, but there are some that are more heat tolerant than others. So if you're looking for a heat tolerant kale, you can go with a lacinato kale. It's also called dino kale. Um, if you're looking for a more heat tolerant lettuce, uh, you can go with Jericho lettuce I already mentioned, or maybe summer bib lettuce or Henderson Black Seeded Simpson Lettuce. So those are really good, more on the heat tolerant. Not saying you can plant them in the summertime, but <laughs> they are more heat tolerant. Um, and of the spinach varieties we carry, Bloomsdale Longstanding is the more heat tolerant of what we carry. Um, so the smaller lettuce varieties, as I mentioned earlier, can be interplanted with larger, larger crops. So say you're growing, uh, I don't know, cauliflower and you don't want that cauliflower to take up best that whole square. You can plant maybe a lettuce or two in the middle of that. You can mix it up. You can do a kale and a lettuce. Swiss chard I find takes a lot more room. Um, I generally only plant one Swiss chard plant per square in my raised bed. I really like to let Swiss chard go crazy because I love the leaves. Uh, and we, it's super versatile. You can use it in place of spinach. So like in the summertime when it's a little warmer, and your spinach has bolted, now you've got some Swiss chard that you can pull and cook it up just like you would spinach. It is a little, in my opinion, on the bitter side when it gets really large, um, if it's raw, which is why I generally cook it. Um, David says Malabar spinach or space spinach and perpetual spinach Swiss chard, very good ones. Perpetual spinach Swiss chard is definitely more on the heat tolerant side as well. Ford Hill Giant is more on the cold tolerant side, but it gets giant, very giant. Uh, so you're gonna sow the seeds anywhere from a half inch, a quarter inch to a half inch deep. Um, again, depending on the seeds, 
Uh, germination time is between three to 14 days, depending on, again, what you're planting. Um, and depending on the variety, they can be ready to consume in as well as 40 days. So again, really good options for you. Um, I didn't, I actually didn't bring it with me, but the gourmet greens mix is something that we came up with. Um, I had this um, 55 gallon drum, food grade drum, cut it in half, filled it with soil, and then sprinkled different types of greens that I really liked in it, and it came up really well. So we came up with the gourmet greens mix. That's a really good one. It's a single seed pack, and you can get, I think, six different varieties all in one. So a really good option for you there. Um, let's see what else. And greens, I've already mentioned what they are. Um, I'll and even mention even later on in the video what they companion with. So greens are pretty much, I, I pretty much go greens wherever I can. Uh, I don't really worry about if they're going to work or not. So just something to consider. Kohlrabi is next. Uh, and it's an often not talked about crop. Um, kohlrabi is not necessarily something that if I go to the grocery store, I'm going to find on the shelf. Actually, two years being here, we, yes, we're, set, we're rural and our grocery store is on the smaller side compared to what I was used to, but I have yet to see kohlrabi in the grocery store. I have seen it in more specialty markets. Um, and it's so easy to grow that it's just, it's perfect. You can eat the leaves of the kohlrabi as well as the bulb. This is a fun one because kohlrabi actually forms a bulb above the soil. So different than uh, beets, beets grow under the soil, onions tend to grow under the soil. A kohlrabi will produce a bulb above the soil. The taste is similar to cabbage or a broccoli stem, but a little on the sweeter side. I don't know if you like broccoli stems. I love broccoli stems, so that's a really good one for you if you like that, that flavor. It is a cruciferous vegetable, so it might be susceptible to um, aphids. Not that every cruciferous vegetable is going to get aphids, but I have found in my experience that can happen. Um, you really just can sow the seeds, water the seeds, and they're, they're fairly easy. They're a little more of a low-maintenance crop in my experience. Um, the companions include beets, beans, celery, chamomile, chives, dill, nasturtiums, and rosemary. So some easy crops, some not so easy crops in there as far as starting from seed and with the companions. Um, they tend to, the seeds germinate in 7 to 14 days. Uh, and harvest time is 60 or more. So that's a really good one. Uh, David says, I haven't had luck growing kohlrabi, but I've tried it and it tastes like a cross between cabbage and water chestnut. Okay, see, there you go. Um, broccoli. Broccoli is like definitely on the uh, fall planting list. So my friend asked me if I was growing cabbage this fall, and I said yes, uh, but I am possibly growing for in my food garden more of the sprouting varieties than the larger heading varieties. And I'll explain that in just a little bit. So this is another one of those aphid crops. Just keep an eye on it, spray it down. I mentioned already that you can eat the leaves and the stem. So what I really like about the sprouting varieties are you've got leaves and stems that you can also harvest from. Um, now let's talk about the difference. So early purple sprouting broccoli and Calabrese broccoli are both smaller head uh, broccolis. The, the early purple is fantastic. I really like it. It's easier. <laughs> um, whereas like the DeChico broccoli or the Waltham broccoli are both larger heading broccolis. More like if you go to the grocery store and you see that larger head of broccoli, that's going to be what you're looking at as far as those two varieties go. And we've got a bunch of different varieties. Um, I like the Romanesco d'Italia broccoli. It kind of feels like a cauliflower um, and it's got the, uh, the Fibonacci like circle with spikes. It just looks, it looks out of this world. It looks alien. Um, and that's a really good one as well. So I, I will probably grow that one for spring or I'll grow it from seed or for seeds, but I won't necessarily grow it in my food garden. 
Um, the companions include, again, you're going to hear some of the same varieties here. So you can kind of figure out what to grow. Um, beets, celery, chamomile, lettuce, there it goes with your lettuce, uh, rhubarb. Rhubarb is a perennial, so just be aware you don't really want to be disturbing your roots of your uh, rhubarb as much if you're like pulling things out at a later time. Uh, rosemary, again, is a perennial, so if you've got a perennial garden and you want to fill in some spots, you can add some of these varieties. Um, shallots and spinach, we talked about spinach earlier, so those are all companions for broccoli. Uh, you're gonna plant your seeds about a quarter of an inch to uh, a half an inch. You're going to, again, keep them watered. You have to keep them watered. If specifically these cruciferous vegetables that are more cool tolerant, you really don't want the soil to dry out. Uh, seeds germinate in typically 10 to 14 days, sometimes less. Uh, and then again, depending on which variety plant, you can be harvesting in as early as 45 days or as much as 90 days or more. So if you want to grow those larger heading varieties, those are more of a 90 day. So you're going to want to be planting those sooner than later. Uh, whereas for me, if I'm going to be growing the early purple sprouting in my food garden, I'm definitely going to be waiting a little longer. Again, it's August, so I won't be planting the sprouting broccoli until September. I love broccoli. I really do. My mom used to call them baby trees and we would actually eat them sometimes. Uh, now I have a little more of a greater um, appreciation for broccoli than I had growing up. Yum. And of course, if you're working out in the garden in this heat, make sure you stay hydrated. Cauliflower. <laughs> We've mentioned cauliflower a couple times in the discussions of cruciferous vegetables. Uh, snowball cauliflower and purple of Sicily cauliflower are two of our varieties. Um, they are both 90, 90 plus day varieties. So it's definitely something that takes a lot more planning than say um, beets or radish. So you wanna make sure that you have a little more time and a little more space for your cauliflower. Uh, companions are beans, celery, and chamomile. Uh, however, um, beans and onions are not companions, so you definitely want to plan accordingly. You're going to want to sow those seeds, again, a half inch deep, six inches apart, and then you want to thin to maybe eight to 12 inches apart, depending on what you're growing. If you are transplanting them, uh, you can just plant one per square or one every foot, one every eight to 12 inches would be good. Um, these are definitely, cauliflower is definitely something that I will be planting early on in my fall planting. Uh, carrots. So carrots are frustrating. <laughs> I will openly admit that carrots are frustrating. Uh, we have good years, we have not so great years, uh, it is one thing that I will master. I love growing carrots and I've grown them successfully. So I'm not saying I haven't, but it's definitely one that is good years and bad years, like David mentioned. Some years are great, some years are just, I don't know what I did. Um, now I have had a little bit of researching and finding some tips that I wanted to share with you that work. Um, they, number one, carrots take a long time to germinate have patience. Uh, it is definitely not as um, instant gratification as beans or cow peas, as I mentioned earlier in the video where they're popping out of the ground in three days. So carrots take a lot of time to germinate. I generally uh, over sow my carrots. For fall planting of carrots, um, it is recommended that you sow the seeds deeper than normal so that they don't dry out. I have seen people put a wooden board over the ground, but I'm not so sure how that's gonna work once they start popping up. And I didn't look into it as much, but I have seen people using cardboard, which is a little on the easier side. Um, Ron says, what seeds do you sell that work in North Texas? I actually have two seed combo packs specifically that do well in Texas. So I would definitely check those out. Um, Krista, you're getting ahead of me. <laughs> Uh, all right, so I'm reading everybody's, I'm reading everybody's comments. Um, so the varieties that I'm discussing tonight, there are quite a few of them that I'm mentioning for 
Um, oh, you're asking specifically for carrots. Sorry about that. Um, specifically for Texas. The seed varieties that I've had great um, success with have been Black Nebula, uh, Scarlet Nantes. I actually brought some with me, so I wouldn't, in just in case somebody asked me, uh, Cosmic Purple and Little Finger and Chantenay Red Core. So those are just a small offering of what we carry at Mary's Heirloom Seeds, but those are varieties that have done better for me here than say maybe when we were in, uh, well, same goes for Florida as well. So we, we've definitely grown carrots in different re regions and those are the ones that have done the best in hot climates. Um, so because carrots take longer to germinate, you do wanna make sure you water, water, water well. If you're not getting rain, you have to water. Uh, the cardboard trick should help to keep the moisture in the ground. Obviously, you're going to have to take that cardboard off to water it. Um, another thing you can do is mulch really well or put straw down so that you cover the soil where your seeds are. Those seedlings will pop up from that straw, um, but they'll have a trickier time doing it under cardboard. Um, here's something that you may not have considered, and that is salsify. I have it here somewhere. Somewhere. I don't know where it went. It's here somewhere. Um, so salsify is a newer one for us and it is a very long root and it has edible leaves and flowers. So the root is harvested and cooked and has a similar flavor to oysters. I am not a huge oyster fan, but I am definitely going to try cooking them this year instead of just harvesting seeds and see if it's something I like to eat. I'm a huge fan of trying something new. Uh, and I even have said, I remember saying to my friend, there, there really isn't a vegetable that I met that I haven't liked. So those are really good ones as well. David said, um, oh, so it <laughs> sounds fishy. So Krista, I'm so sorry, I just skipped over that. You mentioned seed tape. I actually did a video, I think this year, about making your own seed tape. And I shared with you how to make your own seed tape and that, was a successful endeavor in my garden. So because I had the seeds perfectly lined up it, all in a row, and I was able to water that in and then cover it with some soil or cover it with your cardboard, and the germination was so much better than when I just sprinkled the seeds in the soil. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna kind of end the evening with some faster maturing crops. So turnips and rutabagas. Not a super common variety that everybody talks about. Krista says that's where I learned it from. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't grown turnips and rutabagas, I highly recommend it. They are easy to grow from seed, they are root crops, and they get actually a little sweeter with a frost. So they, some people say they taste a little earthy. I love them, so I, I don't really, some people say like beets taste like dirt and some people say, oh no, beets are earthy. So <laughs> I guess it just depends on your verbiage on that one. Um, but I do think that turnips are sweeter than rutabagas. It's a family Thanksgiving thing. I remember from when I was a kid. So uh, I will always grow rutabagas and I will always eat rutabagas. Um, so those are two varieties that are super easy to grow. They are root crops like I mentioned. Uh, so you want to give them a little space a little more than normal. Uh, they From seed to harvest is 60 plus days, but like I mentioned, they will withstand some frost. So you can plant them a little earlier and give them a little more time, or you can plant them a little later, and they may not be damaged by a frost or a freeze if you have that earlier on in the year. And radishes are 30 to 55 days. So those are another easy crop you can grow. If you had spindly radishes last time around, it's a sign that you might have a calcium deficiency in your soil. So a couple of my favorites are, and ones that have done really well here, are watermelon radish, purple plum radish, Japanese daikon, red daikon, and purple plum. You're gonna sow your seeds about a quarter to a half an inch deep. You're gonna keep it watered really well. Uh, you don't want to overcrowd your radish. If you overcrowd your radish, that is another reason why you will grow spindly radish and they won't form a good bulb. So you definitely need to keep your eye on that. I tend to overseed and then I will pull out the radishes and just usually eat them in the garden while I'm planting. 
So those are easy ones you can grow that don't take a lot of time. So if you live in a short season variety, you can probably plant um, radishes this month. If you are in a longer season of growing like we are, I'm not gonna plant mine until September. So I've got plenty of time. Um, herbs, specifically ones that are a little more cool tolerant, uh, not everything, but a couple that I will be growing is gonna be calendula. It is definitely not heat tolerant. Uh, especially, well, in my experience anyway. So I will be planting calendula later on in the, in the uh, fall. I'll be planting basil, all the different basils. Um, I do have some still growing even in this crazy heat, but some are more heat tolerant than others. Uh, dill, cilantro, cilantro is definitely not heat tolerant. Um, and I'll also be growing fennel. Um, again, these are some of the varieties that I'll be adding to the new container garden that I'll be putting together. And then I'll also be interplanting these varieties in um, within my raised beds. Now, a little bit of caution. If you decide to plant fennel, uh, similar to sunflowers, they can, their roots can exude a chemical that can hinder the growth of other plants. So I will be planting fennel in a container instead of in my garden. So that's just a little word of caution. Um, I might be offering some free fennel seeds one of these days, you just never know. And last but certainly not least is garlic. Garlic is definitely on my top of my list for uh, fall planting, but I'm gonna leave you there with a little teaser because we will have an entire video dedicated to garlic very soon, probably next week. Um, we don't plant garlic here until October, so there's plenty of time before I have to plant it, but there's not much time before if you want to purchase it. Um, seed garlic is available um, in very limited quantities right now at marysheirloomseeds.com. We offer pre-orders from July 1st to August 1st, so we're kind of past that point. If we, if we still have some left, there's a couple of varieties that we have a little bit left, you can still purchase them. Um, but those need to be planned ahead because we offer pre-orders and then we ship them in October. So that's a little extra for you. So I will, um, I will answer any questions that you have if you send me an email. I always kind of close with a lot of information um, in the description section of this video. If you missed the beginning, you'll find my comprehensive planting guide. You'll find my fall planning and planting that most of this discussion was based on tonight. Uh, you won't find these specific like companion information and everything all in that one, but you will find like the 90 day, 60 day, 30 day breakdown of these specific varieties. Um, you will also find a link to my comprehensive planting guide that has so much information, it's crazy, um, but also the companion planting information that I wanted to point out. You'll find a link to the garlic. You'll find lots of great stuff. Um, and then we also, I mentioned earlier, we've got a seed giveaway that goes from August 1st to August 7th. And you'll find our August seed planting guide at marysheirloomseeds.com. Go to Mary's blog and you'll find all that information. So if you haven't already, please hit the th thumbs up to our video and subscribe to our channel. Uh, get the, hit the notify button when you see videos pop up so that way you get notified when we have live chats. I do try to be consistent and go live here every Thursday at 5 p.m. Central Time. And if there's a specific question that I didn't answer, send me an email and maybe it'll be in our next, uh, our next live chat. Thanks for joining me, everybody. I really appreciate it and happy planting.